this is a fascinating looking integral uh, and the reason it prompted me to actually call it a sort of an anime character is because while solving it I had to use a few transformations that were extremely cool. So what I'm actually talking about or the transformations that I'm talking about are ones involving well Euler's formula from complex analysis where e to the i t equals the cosine of t plus i times the sine of t. And once we get this integral transformed into a much cooler version involving only exponentials instead of exponentials and trig functions, then we can differentiate under the integral sign using Feynman's technique. So yeah, this all seems extremely cool. And the reason I was led towards using Euler's relation or Euler's formula is the fact that I have trig functions and exponentials in my integral i. So let's just get started then. So if e to the i t equal the cosine of t plus i times the sine of t, then shifting my focus towards this term here, because this exponential term is actually going to be pretty useful if I convert uh, the trig term into an exponential term. So that would actually be pretty useful to retain the trig part, uh, retain the exponential part and convert the trig part into an exponential part. So we see that the argument is the sine of x. So e to the i times sine x would be equal to the cosine of sine x plus i times the sine of plus i times the sine of sine x. And it's this part that I'm interested in, correct? Which is the real part of the uh, of the term e to the i sine x. So that means my integral can be written as the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the real part, that is, the real part of the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the cosine of x times e to the i sine x. Now, we can make use of the properties of exponential functions and just write the integrand as e to the cosine of x plus i to the sine of x, which itself looks extremely cool, but it gets even better because this term here, as per Euler's formula, is just e to the i x. So that means my integral i is the real part of the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the e to the i x. Now exponential functions are actually pretty easy to integrate. So if you have e to the f of x times the derivative of f of x, then we know that this sorts out to e to the f of x plus the constant of integration in case of the indefinite integral of course. In the case of the definite one, obviously you have to use the limits of integration. You have to use the limits of integration. Uh, now the key takeaway here is that uh, there are my usual colors. Here they are. The key takeaway is that you want the derivative of the function uh, in the exponential function or the argument of the exponential function. You want its derivative. So here we are interested in having the derivative with respect to x of e to the i x, which sorts out to i times e to the i x. And uh, how exactly are we going to get that term here? I mean, we can't just pop it up out of nowhere. So the coolest way to actually re resolve this problem is using Feynman's technique. So using Feynman's technique or the Leibniz rule, yes, we all know that. We all know that. Anyway, so using uh, Feynman's technique, we have to define an integral function i of a, correct? Now let's see which choice of the uh, placement of the parameter actually works. Keeping in mind that I want something like this as part of the integrand as well. What if I place the parameter as part of the argument of the first exponential function like this? Uh, under set circumstances, if I take the partial derivative with respect to a, which is required as per the Feynman technique, and because x is a constant in this case of uh, differentiation, uh, we will get e to the a uh, times e to the i x and multiplied by the derivative of this argument with respect to a. Now, this will result in getting e to the i x as a 
constant multiple in this case because the derivative of a with respect to a is one anyway. So this is a the simplest choice. The simplest choice looks pretty good here. So we define our integral function i of a with the parameter a popped up here. And now I can take the derivative of the integral function with respect to the parameter a, and that equals the real part of the derivative of the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the a e i to e to the i x. That's a mouthful. Anyway, now because we have an oscillatory function here, exponentials uh, of this sort are just uh, oscillatory functions anyway, so there are no problems uh, regarding convergence whatsoever. So you can switch up the order of the uh, differentiation and the integration operators, and that will convert the total derivative with respect to a into a partial derivative with respect to a. Now taking the derivative, we have the real part of the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the a times e to the ix times uh, the derivative of a with respect to a is 1, so you're left with this constant term here, which is exactly what we needed, pretty much exactly what we needed. Now we're completely in the x world, so the a term is a constant. And what to note here, what to note here is that we needed the derivative of this function here. And the derivative of this function with respect to x was in fact the uh, function repeated times, uh, using the chain rule, we have a as a constant multiple, so just write it out here. We have a as a constant multiple, so we'll need that term, uh, times the derivative of this function here, which again, using the chain rule, will give you an i term as well. So I'm going to have to multiply by a times i here and divide by exactly this term outside. Now all that's left is elementary integration techniques, right? So we have the real part of e to the a um, times e to the i x with the limits of integration being 0 and 2 pi. And the problem with uh, the question, the, uh, the problem or the integration with these limits is actually pretty convenient. It's pretty convenient because... Uh, because of the periodicity of the uh, of the exponential function in complex analysis. So we have a times e to the 2 pi i minus e to the a times e to the 0. And because of periodicity, uh, this term is 0 as, uh, well, this term evaluates to 1 as well as this term. So both terms evaluate to 1. So we have e to the a minus e to the a, which is of course 0, and the real part of 0 is 0 as well. So we have something imaginary times 0, which is the real number 0. So the derivative of i with respect to a is in fact 0. And a function's derivative is 0 when that function is a constant with respect to that, uh, with respect to the variable you're integrating. So that means the function i of a is a constant irrespective of whatever value of the parameter a you plug in. Now to backtrack a little, we had the uh, integral function defined as the, the real part of the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the e, uh, e to the a times e to the i x. And this sorts out to, um, well you were interested in the case where I, a equals 1. In the case where a equals 1, this will sort out to e, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, of e to the cosine of x times the cosine of sine of x. And although this is the case you're interested in, um, i of 1 is the same as any other i of a because of the constancy with respect to the parameter a. So we could use a equals 0, but be careful here with, uh, be careful uh, with a choice of the value of the parameter you're using. You can use a equals 0, but not exactly 0, because notice that we had to divide by a in the uh, integration process. So although we can't use a equals 0, we can always use the right-hand limit, the right-side limit. So i of 0, or the limit of i as 
a approaches 0 from the right-hand side, equals the real part, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, of e to the 0 times e to the i x, which is, of course, a 0. And this is just uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 with respect to x, which is a real number, so you can drop the r e uh, notation there. So you'll get 2 pi. So the right-hand limit as a approaches 0 is 2 pi, and because the function is a constant with respect to a, i of 1, which is the uh, integral you were interested in, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the cosine of x times the uh, cosine of sine of x, this equals 2 pi as well, which is pretty cool. It's a very satisfying result, and the constancy proves that the integral is right now in its ultra-instinct form, which is uh, the final form, for now anyway, for now, uh, until the next season drops anyway, or some or something outlandish, something even more outlandish happens in the manga. So anyway, thank you, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.